How long does it take a car to stop if the driver literally sees a deer in the headlights? Well, that depends on two factors. First of all, how quickly can the driver respond to the obstacle? The average reaction time for human being is 0.25 seconds when responding to a visual stimulus, but it's only 0.17 seconds if it's an audio, and even less for a touch stimulus. During the time that the driver's still trying to react to the situation, the car keeps traveling forward because he hasn't stepped on the brakes just yet. So we call this the thinking distance. If the driver didn't have a good night's rest, his tiredness will increase the thinking distance. If he's had some booze or tripping on drugs, his thinking distance will also increase. Well, yeah, there are nootropics, but we'll save that for another time. And distractions like loud music, and the faster the car is going, or the older the driver is, the worse the driver's reaction time would be. This is why Formula One car racers like Lewis Hamilton constantly practice improving their reaction times. They can cut it down to as low as 0.2 seconds. Well, here's a way to practice. Clap your hands together when you see this red triangle flashes up anywhere in the video. Now the question is, what happens after the driver reacts and then steps on the brakes? The car is not going to stop immediately. It will gradually slow down because of friction between the tires and the ground before it finally stops. The distance the car travels once the brakes are applied is known as the braking distance. The braking distance depends on how fast the car is traveling. And is it raining? Is it snowing? Is there any puddles on the road? What about the conditions of the brakes? How's the grip on the tires? Let's plot the idea of thinking distance and braking distance on a velocity time graph. During the thinking distance, the velocity remains constant. However, during the braking distance, the car gradually reduces its velocity. We know that the area underneath a velocity time graph gives us the distance traveled by the car. So if we add up these two areas, we get what's known as the stopping distance. This is the total distance the car travels from the moments that the driver reacts to when the car actually stops.